This is Anchor Your Retirement with Barb Golan from Safe Harbor Financial Planning Group. When a part of your financial strategy is out of tune, your long-term goals, your retirement savings, and your legacy can all suffer. With many years of experience in the financial industry, Barb Golan provides her clients and prospects the information they need regarding Social Security, retirement income planning, wealth management, and much more. Listen in as we address your financial concerns and provide helpful strategies to put you on the path to achieving your retirement goals. And now here is Anchor Your Retirement with Barb Gullen. Welcome to the Anchor Your Retirement podcast. I'm your host, Barb Gullen, and I'm here today with my co-host, Tony Shore. How you doing, Tony? I'm doing great today, Barb. Great to be here. Uh, I'm excited about today's show. You always pick interesting topics and take interesting angles. You look, like to look at things from a different viewpoint. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who call themselves financial planners or like to spout financial advice. There's a lot of other shows people have to choose from and a lot of voices out there. Uh, but I like the perspective you take. I mean, for example, uh, our viewers and listeners can go back and check out last week's show, uh, Your Financial Spirit Animal. I loved I that. I thought that was fun. Yeah, that is fun. I really enjoyed that. And today, I know you've got a great show lined up as well, but I'm happy to be here. I've had a great week, Barbara. I've so really, have I. Yeah, I've had a really productive week. How, have, how about you? What have you been up to? Well, we've gotten to help quite a few people this week, which is like the highlight of my week. That's yep. why I do what I do. Right. Um, but the weather has been a little bit more cooperative than yeah. it had been. Hoping it's a little bit better up there for you. It uh, is. The dog is definitely liking the morning walks a whole lot better than she was. You yep. know, we had a lot less humidity for a few days here. Yeah. Um, Us but, too. And our dog, it's the same. We've taken him on walks. Twice a day, he's loving getting outside. I know. Now, what color is your dog? Black and white. He's okay. A, he's what I call a black and white, and we have a black and white cat. Uh, so I go, oh, here, here come the black and whites. I call them the black <laughs> and whites, and I'm not talking about police cars either. Uh, mm, he's no. a big guy. He's about seventy pounds. Um, he's I've part- got a lab pit mix, and she's solid black. So yep our our dog is lab pit and Border Collie and Weimer on her. So kind of a mix. Oh my gosh. A rescue. A beautiful dog though. I, and I'm the, sure, but probably yeah. tries to herd you and play with you all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. He, sometimes he thinks he's a lap dog, but when you get 75, <laughs> 70, 75 pounds jumping on you, you, you'll know it. Oh, mine completely believes she's a lap dog. So <laughs> that's funny. I'm right there with you. Yeah. That's yeah, funny. But But, you know, that dark coat, I like to walk her before the sun is really up because I know she just gets so hot otherwise. Yeah, our dog does as well. It's mostly black with some white. It's Mm. basically like a lot of border collies, those markings, you know, where it's black with the white strip down the face. Yeah. (laughs) How cute. Kind of like a milk cow. Well, but people didn't tune in today to find out about our dogs as no, much they, as we love them. <laughs> no, they did not. And you've got a great topic. What What are we talking about today? We're talking today about finding an advisor that fits with you because not all advisors are made the same. Not all advisors, um, you know, it's just like looking for a doctor or for a hairstylist or for any other kind of service professional that you have different personalities work better with some people rather than others. And you know how you're wired, you know what your preferences are. And it's okay to go out and shop for an advisor that is going to align with you. But you also want an advisor that is going to give you accurate information, be willing to teach you and tell you the hard things. Right. And it's not, you don't go to an advisor for them to just say, okay, you need to do this, this, and this, and this. They need to work with you and help you make the right choices that you want to make and that are best for you and to keep you from making costly mistakes or bad choices, right? I mean, it's important to get to, that they get to know you and know who you are. Right. Because your circumstances are unique. 
And while certain advisors follow certain formulas for how they help people create their financial future, I would caution against anybody that you go to that wants to put you into a very fixed cookie cutter type model because sure. you're not a cookie cutter. You know, I mean, I, for example, I had kids later on in life. Most of the people, I've got my 35 year high school reunion coming up like in about six weeks. And a lot of my classmates are empty nesters already. Whereas I've still got kids in high school, but I also know I've got classmates who still have kids in elementary school. So it makes a huge difference. You know, your circumstances are going to very significantly dictate what your retirement looks like, how much you need to save, how much, you know, when you're going to be able to do it. There's just so many variables. It's so important for you to find somebody that's going to really find out who you are and what makes you tick. Yeah, that's the key. And that personal connection and working with somebody on a personal level, uh, that's something that the so-called robo-advisors and technology just cannot replace. I mean, you know, we have uh, algorithms and AIs and robo-advisors, uh, but it, you can input numbers and it can spit a number back out at you, but mm -hmm. it can't get to know you and your family and your wants, needs, goals, and desires. It just isn't going to happen. That's just it. You know, I mean, I, I there's so many articles coming about coming out about how artificial intelligence yep. is going to take over the financial services industry. And I think back to the commercial for one of the major brokerage houses a few years ago. I think it might have been a Super Bowl commercial where it was literally a robot sitting across the desk from a couple <laughs> trying to figure out their financial future. Yes. Remember those? Yes. Yes. And that illustrated it perfectly. I mean, yeah. Yeah. You know, only instead of making fun of it, now it seems like people are running to it, but it's not, it's not just simply, like you said, plugging in a number and having it spit another number out. Yeah. I mean, on a weekly basis, I am encountering and helping people, some who have millions of dollars and some who are literally asking me, am I ever going to be able to retire because I have to start over and I am X years old. Sure. So, you know, there, I'm sorry. I don't think a robot is ever really going to be able to fully accommodate that need. Right. Or that the human aspect of all of it. Right. And they think by, well, we're going to have people answer certain questions and then it gets inputted into the computer. Uh, but <laughs> there are nuances and people never answer a written test or enter into the computer what's really going on in their lives. You have to dig down. You have to get to know somebody. And when you're dealing with people, you need the human aspect. The human element has to be there. And you really do. But but you also need to find the right human. <laughs> so you, do. you need I mean, somebody I was... you can trust and somebody yeah. who you feel a connection with and feel gets you and your goals and is able to help you. And you want to work with a trusted fiduciary, a financial professional who's going to look out for your best interests. And that's where you mm -hmm. come in, right, Barbara? You know, I, absolutely. You know, I was on the phone with a client last night, a prospective client, and they took that color of money risk analysis that you and I talk about, I think probably every podcast. Yep, yep. Um, and they came up with a certain number and we're getting to the point where we're getting ready to implement the plan. And they sat there last night and they're like, you know, we're really not sure that we did that the way we want to do it. Is it going to be okay with you if we retake that before we implement all of this right. so that we know we're doing what's really in line with what we want? And a robot's not going to do that for you. Nope. No, never. And so that's a big part of this. But you do need to partner with an advisor and a lot of people out there put that off or think, Oh, I'm not Uber wealthy. You know, I'm not Bill Gates or mm -hmm. whoever it is, whoever the latest billionaire is people are talking about. Um, so I, I think that, uh, but that's not true. Is it to work with a financial advisor? Uh, you need a f an advisor just to know what to do with that lump sum you have in your 401k and how to make it last in retirement. Right. 
a- absolutely. There are so many things that an advisor does. And if you're going to make a list of things that you want an advisor to do, at the top of your list, I want you to put down that they need to listen to you and really find out what your concerns are. You need an advisor who's not afraid to ask the hard questions and you need an advisor who doesn't come into the meeting already making an assumption about what you do or don't need. Right. There you go. Yeah. And doesn't ask for a cookie cutter uh, approach or just have a cookie cutter approach for you and hand you this, here's a plan and just punch in your numbers and here's your plan. Right. Right. You know, now, I mean, I have a formula for how I approach my clients, oh, sure. but, and every good advisor will, you don't want an advisor that's like, well, I think I'll try this this time and see if it works. You want somebody who understands what they're doing and who knows, you know, you want somebody with, I have heard another advisor say with a little salt in the pepper, a little experience. Sure, now sure. I happen to pay good money to get rid of the salt in my <laughs> pepper. <laughs> That's your natural hair color. Don't try to convince us that you're dying your hair. I don't think my hair was ever this color. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I thought you were a natural redhead this whole time. Oh no. My feistiness comes from my ethnicity, oh. not my hair color. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, th- I thought you had both going for you, to be honest. No, Barbara. no, no. <laughs> it's strictly my Italian heritage. I that's promise. Great. That's great. Um, but you know, it, that's just, it is. You, I can go to a number of my clients and, you know, work on remembering things about their kids work on remembering, you know, oh, you were going to have knee surgery. How did that go? How are you feeling? Did you get our get well card? It's so much more than a transactional business for me. And I think that most of the advisors who really care feel the same way. We get invested in seeing our clients succeed and clients deserve to have an advisor who has that vested interest in them. Yeah. Yeah. I would agree. And I know that you like to get to know your clients and that's why you offer a no charge, no obligation consultation just to Mm -hmm. get to know them and say, Hey, you know, here's, let me, let's figure out where you're at. Uh, let me look at it. Maybe you're set. Maybe you don't need me at this point, but maybe you do. And there's things I can help you with. And then you decide, okay, let's move forward or not. But it's also seeing if you're a good fit. I mean, you have to uh, want to help them. They have to want to help you. And I know you love helping people, uh, but you just want to, you need that connection as well. You really do. And you know what? Sometimes there are people that I meet with and I'm like, you know, I think you're going to be much happier with meeting with this advisor and sending them to somebody that I know in the industry that I trust that I know is going to do the right thing for them. Sometimes it's a personality issue. Sometimes it's a geography, a location issue, you know, although we work with people all over the country, thanks to zoom. It's probably the one good thing that came out of the pandemic a couple of years ago is that in some ways we're slightly more connected. Um, Some of my favorite clients are on the coast and I'm sitting here in a flyover state and get the privilege of working with them. Yeah. It's really exciting, but it just, you know, as a person, you know, it's like going to the doctor's office, you know, sometimes you go in and you see a doctor and it feels very rushed and very check the boxes, that kind of thing versus the one that sits down and really says, no, tell me what's really going on and asks the questions to not just treat the symptom, but to get the root get to the root of the issue. That's a great analogy, Barbara. And I've, I think we've probably all experienced that. I definitely have. And I've Mm -hmm. had a hard time finding, boy, when you find that person that you connect with, that seems to really care and wants to spend the time with you and isn't just checking boxes, that's Mm -hmm. the doctor you want to work with. And so uh, I think that makes perfect sense. It really is. But then when that doctor retires, Oh, or moves. I my I had a doctor for years and he moved last year. And so mm-hmm. I'm still on the hunt for a good replacement. Yeah. yeah. So 
So Yeah, but that's the next thing you probably want to look for in an advisor is you want somebody who has a succession plan in place Yes, if something happens to them. Um, you know, I'm not saying that you need to go with a huge firm. Right. But sometimes a firm that's got a few people on staff and isn't just one person, not to say there's anything wrong with that. Yep. Um, but you might want to have that sense of security that you know there's a backup plan if something happens to them. Yeah. My grandfather outlived his financial planner and two estate planning attorneys. Uh, he lived, oh my gosh. He lived to be 101 and he was going strong just two months before he passed. So uh, he lived a long, healthy life. And mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, it's <laughs> you can out you can outlive the help. Uh, I can tell you that. But uh, you want to make sure you are working with somebody you like and you trust. And I know, Barbara, a, a succession plan is something you have in place. Your clients, if something happens to you, uh, it's going to be a smooth transition. There isn't going to be any bumps in the road uh, there. Your financial advisory firm is going to continue and it's going to continue mm-hmm. to help them and, and work in the same way and trusting manner that you always have. And that is so key. You are exactly right. It really is. You know, it, not only having a succession plan in place, but I think, you know, it's also good for an advisor to be engaged and involved with the entire family. Yes. Um, you know, I when I do a lot of my work, I insist if a couple is married, that both of them participate in the financial planning process. I want both of them to at least have a general understanding of what's going on so that especially if the person that is the primary financial person in the couple passes away or something catastrophic happens, the other person isn't sitting there staring at this file folder of stuff wondering what they have to do. Number one, first and foremost, they know that they can call me and that we're going to guide them through everything that's going on. But there's also a surprising number of women who, when their husbands pass away, leave the financial advisor that the husband may have been with for ever or have what they thought was a well-established relationship because the wife doesn't feel like that advisor was ever involved in their wants, their needs, or engaged with them. It happens more often than you'd think. Hmm. Interesting. Well, Mm -hmm. and there are a number of things, uh, Barbara, I wanted to ask you about for our listeners out there. If they're trying to choose or find a financial professional to work with, what are some things they need to look for? Like transparency on how that advisor is paid, right? Absolutely. I, I, I'm using that word so much today. Gosh. Um, <laughs> well, that means I'm saying the right thing. So I like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, an advisor should be very honest with you about how they are being compensated. You know, on the insurance side, for the practice that I run and the way I work, the insurance companies compensate me directly for things that are market-based that's fee-based. And I'm splitting that fee with whoever my third party money manager is, but people deserve to know where their money's going. You know, I had somebody ask me yesterday, we were talking about an insurance product and they're like, okay, and is your payment for helping me with this going to come out of the money that I put in? And I'm like, no, it's not. Actually, the insurance company compensates me. So we know that the the money you're putting in is the money that's going to go to work for you. Yeah, that's huge. And and that is important. And uh, another thing to note, you're not working with one company and that's an advantage. You also want to look for probably an independent financial advisor rather than a big box company, because you're not beholden to just one company and just their products. And there's not going to be the turnover. You have your own firm, you're independent, and you can look at all the insurance companies out there and all the investment opportunities and investment tools and say, oh, for your situation, this tool or this company or this investment, right? Right. And more importantly, I work for myself. I do not have a boss sitting behind me in a corner office somewhere 
telling me that I have a quota to reach. You don't ever have to worry if I'm making a recommendation for a product that it's because I have to get so much of that product sold within a certain period of time. And in the big box environment, they do have quotas to meet. They do have specific things that they're required to sell. Yep. Even on the property and casualty side, they a lot of the bigger boxes f- want to force their agents to sell so much in life insurance or something outside of the property and casualty line in order to stay in good standing with that franchise or that agency. Mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about any of that because the only person that I answer to is me and God. That's good. That's good. That's good. And your clients. And I like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's huge. Uh, You've told me before, Barbara, you say I work for my clients. That's they're They're my boss. And so I like that attitude that you have. And uh, so is there anything else our listeners out there need to be aware of when they're choosing a financial professional to work with? It's okay to ask that financial professional questions. There really shouldn't be anything that a financial professional isn't willing to answer or to help somebody understand. I always tell my clients, this is a judgment-free zone. And there is no question that is too insignificant. If it's a question that you have, we need to get it out on the table. We need to get it answered so that you understand what's going on. This ultimately is your money and your financial future. Yeah, there you go. I I like that. And that puts it very succinctly. Uh, You really need that in place. And you need to say, you know, what are your credentials, right? And don't be afraid. Like you say, ask them questions. Mm -hmm. And if you don't like the answers, you might want to find someone else. And that's perfectly all right. You know, I strongly encourage everybody to work with somebody who is a fiduciary. As a fiduciary, I have a responsibility to work in my client's best interest, not in what fortifies my own bottom line. That's That's another great one. And choosing a financial professional, that's a question you should ask. Are you a fiduciary? Probably one of the more upfront questions, right? And it should be one of the first questions. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, uh, this has been a great discussion. Is there anything else you want to add, Barbara, before we have to go today? You know, I think that about covers it. I'll step off of my soapbox a little (laughs) bit here. Well, some great information. And I know if our listeners out there want a list of questions that they should be asking their financial advisor, uh, or uh, choosing an advisor or help with that, you're more than happy to help. Your office is there. They can help. So how can our listeners get a hold of you and maybe set up that complimentary, no cost, no obligation consultation to meet with you and get a plan in place or get a second opinion on where they're at? I It would be an honor. Um, they can always reach out to us at anchoryourretirement.com. That will take you to our website where you can fill out a contact form and we'll reach out to you. Or if you prefer the old fashioned way, you can call us on the telephone. Believe it or not, phones can be used to talk to people. (laughs) And and you can call us at area code 913-553-6222. All right. Well, thank you so much, Barbara. And great show today. That does it for today's episode. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for listening to Anchor Your Retirement. Don't pay too much for taxes or retire without a sound retirement plan. For more information, please contact Barb Gullen at Safe Harbor Financial Planning Group. Call 913-553-6222 or visit them online at anchoryourretirement.com. Advisory services are offered through Safe Harbor Financial Planning Group, LLC, a registered investment advisor in the state of Kansas. All matters discussed during the show are for informational purposes only. Each individual situation may vary and the opinions expressed here may not apply to everyone. Materials presented are believed to be from reliable sources and no representations can be made as to its accuracy. All ideas and information should be discussed in detail with one of our qualified representatives prior to implementation. We are not affiliated with or enforced by the Social Security Administration, the Federal Medicare Program, or any other government agency. Calling this number will direct you to a licensed sales agent.